This is a poison dart frog, and this is a gecko, and this is the habitat where they live together. But how? Today, we're talking about cohabitation, so let's get into it. Whenever bioactive vivariums come up, cohabitation is not far behind. We want all of our tanks to be a perfect slice of nature, and what is more natural than different animals living together in harmony? I said in harmony! But the more you look into this, the more challenging it seems to find two or more types of animals that can live together in an enclosed space and have all of their needs met. There's a few different combinations of species that people bring up a lot in the hobby as being great candidates for cohabitation. And one of those is poison dart frogs and geckos. And that's going to be the topic of today's video. Let us know some other ones down in the comments. Co-having dart frogs and geckos is a hotly debated topic and there's no real consensus, but we've done this a few times now successfully in a few different tanks with a few different species. So we've gotten a lot of questions over the months as we've been posting about this. So today we're going to talk a little bit more about our experiences as well as some things that you might want to consider if you want to try this out yourself. We're gonna start by first talking about species selection, then a bit about habitat construction, and finally, we're gonna show you guys one or two tanks with successful cohabitation that we've worked on, and we're gonna talk about how we applied everything that we talked about earlier. Okay, let's talk species selection. If you're doing this, you need to choose your animals carefully. For dart frogs and geckos, there are a few things that you have to consider. Number one is size. If your frogs are way bigger than your geckos or vice versa, this could obviously lead to aggression or even predation. So for example, Philobates terribilis, which is the largest poison dart frog, have been observed eating young morning geckos in captivity when they're cohabbed together. So their large size would make them a pretty poor candidate for cohabitation. And similarly, you wouldn't want to put very small thumbnail dart frogs like Anufaga species with a larger gecko species. Number two is behavior. Behavior could include how aggressive or territorial the species is, how much they like to move around the tank, where they like to hang out within the tank, and what time of day they're most active. As a general rule, you want to pick non-aggressive species whose behavior will keep them out of each other's way. This is one reason why morning geckos are so popular. They're primarily active at night when your frogs are sleeping, and they tend to stay at the top of the tank and rarely go toward the bottom where your frogs would be hanging out most of the time. All right, the third thing to consider for species selection is your care requirements. So this goes without saying, but if you want to keep two different species together, then obviously both of those species need to have all of their needs met. So this could include food, lighting, temperature, humidity, space, territories, and more. So for example, it might be difficult to keep an electric blue day gecko who needs a humidity from 60 to 80% with a dart frog like Dendrobates erratus who might need an 80 to 90% humidity. So making sure that different animals get their potential differing needs met is the main thing that we're gonna discuss when we talk about habitat construction. So we're gonna get into this a bit more later. But you don't wanna pick frogs and geckos that have widely differing needs or ones that you cannot meet all of their needs adequately in the same tank. As you can probably tell, there's a lot of research that's going to be required if you're interested in cohabitation. You need to be familiar with all the care requirements, behavior, common signs of stress in case you need to intervene. So don't just Google, make sure you're using multiple sources, watch videos, read forums, and try to talk to other hobbyists too. Like us, leave your questions in the comments. Because of the amount of knowledge required, a lot of people would say that cohabbing animals is for advanced hobbyists only. Uh, hot take, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think that if you do all of your research and you proceed responsibly, you could cohab or keep a more difficult animal on your very first tank. It's all about how much effort and time you put into it. To save you some time with your research, we can tell you some potential good candidates for cohabitation. Dendrobates leucomelis, the, or the bumblebee dart frogs, and Dendrobates erratus are mid-sized and fairly unaggressive frogs. They also climb less than other species, so they're more likely to stay out of a gecko's way. So this makes them good to pair with a species like morning geckos or a small day geckos like neon day geckos. Even with the right species combo picked out, the work is not done because you're going to have to think very carefully about how you design their habitat. So first off is size. The easiest way to mitigate aggression, territorialness, is going to be by having a larger tank. 
Uh, you want to ensure that your animals aren't stressed, that they're not competing over territory or competing over resources like food. Um, so you're going to want a big tank. And even if you don't have a huge tank, you can make your existing tank feel larger by adding lots of branches and platforms and ways to divide the tank up into uh, basically extending the floor space upwards and extending that footprint to take up more area. You should also add plenty of hides so that all the animals feel safe and comfortable and have a place they can retreat if they're stressed. Uh, a larger tank is going to also allow you to vary parameters across your tank, which is going to be the next big thing to consider. So typically geckos like day geckos might need slightly lower humidity than dark frogs. Some geckos might need a basking spot or even a heat lamp at a temperature that's much higher than the dark frogs would like. So to cohab these kinds of species together safely, you might need varying parameters within your tank, like a hotter zone at the top and a wetter, cooler zone at the bottom. Allowing your animals to self-regulate like they would in the wild. So if they want to feel warmer, then they could go up higher. If they want to be cooler, wetter, they could go lower. And while it's not impossible to create a gradient like this in a smaller tank, it's obviously a lot easier, like William said, to do it in a big tank. Some things we like to include to allow your animals to uh, choose the environment that's best for them include stuff like a water feature, something like a waterfall, which will increase the humidity in the area right around it, which provides a natural gradient across the tank from more humid to less humid. Uh, in a taller tank, if you have a heat lamp in one area to provide a basking spot or something, you're going to end up with a temperature and humidity gradient from top to bottom as well, right? Under the heat lamp, you're going to have somewhere hot and dry, and as you move away from that, it's going to be cooler and wetter. And this is perfect, because generally geckos like to hang out up top, which would be where your heat lamp is, and that environment is typically more suited for geckos. When you're building your tank, you want to think very carefully about providing different areas with different parameters for your animals to use. Before you plant anything, before you get any critters in there, you should be able to point at your scape in progress and say which parts you plan on making humid, which parts are going to end up being dry, and which parts are going to be warmer and cooler, etc. So you have to plan ahead and not just throw stuff in there and hope that it works. You also need to make sure that you're meeting their food requirements. So you don't want to cut any corners. For example, with the geckos, you would want to give them a lot of fruit paste. And for our dart frogs, we give them a lot of the flies. Um, and we make sure that they both feel like they have access to food so they're not fighting over each other's territory, as well as not needing to cross into each other's territory too much to hunt for food. And to give you guys a better idea about how you can actually apply this, everything we talked about from species selection to habitat construction, we're going to give you a quick tour, quick review of two tanks that we've done with really successful cohabitation. So if you're curious about these specific tanks, we've posted their build videos and we'll link it below, above, um, so you can check those out as well if you want more details. First up, we've got this stunning 36 by 18 by 36. We built this tank for a client for dart frogs and day geckos around 10 months ago. Uh, it's got Dendrobates erratus, Highland bronze, and neon day geckos. It's pretty tall, and although the dart frogs don't get all the way up to the top, we actually need that extra space for the neon day geckos, who are also active during the day. Since they're both going to be active during the day, the extra space of this 36 tall is really going to be what keeps them out of each other's way. This tank is big enough where I don't think that the frogs or the geckos are even aware of each other's existences. We've never really seen them come face to face. Um, we made a waterfall in the bottom left, which gives the highest possible humidity area in the tank. And then at the top of the tank, we have a basking spot, which is powered by a heat lamp, which is going to be the driest part of the tank. So this way, we've got both a temperature gradient from hot to cool and a humidity gradient from dry to wet. So the frogs and geckos should be able to hang out wherever they are most comfortable, which for the geckos ends up being at the very top and the frogs ends up being spread out along the bottom to the middle. The frogs get fed with a lot of fruit flies and springtails at the bottom and the geckos have their cups mounted high up in the canopy with their gecko diet and vitamin supplements. And the geckos are also more than happy to pick off any of those fruit flies that make their way up to the top of the tank. Both the dart frogs and the geckos are super happy in this tank and they're both breeding in here. The frogs have laid eggs in the bromeliads and then carried the tadpoles down to the small pool where they've been growing up as froglets. The geckos lay their eggs at the top 
in the driftwood and bamboo pieces. So it's been really amazing to watch this process unfold. Just look at how small the hatchling geckos are. Super cute. We haven't seen any aggression toward the babies from either species, so we're taking this as a huge win and as a sign of a successful cohabitation. This might be one of our favorite cross species combos. The neon day geckos are so brightly colored and they're so active. I mean, they're just stunning. It goes so well with the dark frogs. This tank is our personal tank, a bioactive 18 by 18 by 24. Since it's a smaller tank, we've got to keep the stocking down, especially for cohabitation. So it's only home to two Dendrobates auratus, green black, and some morning geckos. It's been running for about a year now and it's been doing really great. The morning geckos breed like crazy. We've been trying to find home for all the babies and we constantly have to give them away or sell them to try and keep the population in the tank down. If the tank gets too crowded, then the morning geckos will fight with each other and we're worried that that might stress the frogs. Uh, the dart frogs though, they're fat and they're happy. They don't really seem to ever notice the geckos. For the most part, our dart frogs stay at the bottom and occasionally they'll get up to the middle or the top of the tank. The real thing that keeps them out of each other's way is their schedules. The morning geckos are mainly active at night, so during the day they hide in the background and are kind of hard to spot. Can you see any here? Honestly, they spend a lot of their time on their lid, which is great because it keeps them super far away from the frogs, but it's a little bit boring. We feed tons of fruit flies, which both the dart frogs and the day geckos will happily gobble up, and we also keep a cup filled with gecko diet right at the top for the geckos. All in all, a year in, it's going absolutely great. Uh, we've seen zero aggression and everyone seems to be doing really well. We're actually thinking about upgrading this tank soon, so let us know what size you think we should move it to. All right, what do you guys think? Have you seen cohabitation done in a vivarium? Let us know your thoughts and ideas for possible cross-species cohabs down in the comments. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like, comment, and there's this new thing called hype. So if you see the button, click hype so it boosts us up in the algorithm. And as always, please subscribe to see our future content. And if you want to commission a tank like this one, uh, hit up our email. We build tanks in the Bay Area, but we've also been doing consultations to help people who are far away. That's it for this week's video. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.